Oh. I'm John. I'm, I'm Haley. I'm eating, so you. It's Q&A day. Yeehaw. We have a question from Return to Zion. Ding. Hi, guys. I have a question. I am in the process of learning to slap. For various reasons, I have decided to add a retarder to the mix. I have to use a concrete mixer due to very poor access for a truck and the ridiculous cost of a pump truck in Australia. Praise for Australia. I am using Seeker Retarder In, which requires approximately 200 milliliters in liquid form of retarder per 100 kilograms of cement content and gives approximately 3 to 4 hours of initial setting delay depending on temperature. This works out at about 25 milliliters per load. Ding! It's not right. It's not right. So, he's put, placing a slab. What type of slab did he say? He just said... A set retarder. He didn't say. So I'm going to assume that he was using somewhere between 334 kilograms per cubic meter cementitious to 356. 365, hold on. Let me see. 600 divided by 6855 equals... Yeah, so 334 to 356 kilograms per cubic meter. He said 200 milliliters mm -hmm. per 100 kilogram of cementitious. So let's just say you have 356 divided by 100. We multiply that by 200 milliliters, and we have 712 milliliters per load. Unless he's using, you know, uh, you know, what is it, like 600 or 66 pounds per cube or kilograms per cubic meter of cement that the math is just doesn't work out. 200 milliliters per, yeah, he would have to use, what, how do you get 200 divided by 4? So he'd have to be using somewhere around 40 pounds to get 25 mils. So that's the first thing. He's using 72 or 712 mils per cubic yard. And that actually makes sense. You know, normally with set, re uh, set retarders and hydration stabilizers, you need a lot of this stuff. And 200 mils is a fair amount. There are some that you don't need any. You know, maybe 20 mils will be more than enough. But we don't really, I've never used that product before. And if that's in Australia, we probably just don't have that product out here. So go ahead, sorry. I'm going to eat so, my pretzels. required for the concrete mix in each load and at weight. Just kidding. Um, the data sheet says to add retarder with the water. Therefore, my question is, can I measure the required amount of water in a bucket required for the concrete in each load and add the 25 mils to the bucket? Mix it thoroughly and then add it to the concrete. Mm, or, you're making small loads. Yes. Yeah, he says, I have to use a concrete mixer but to use very poor access for a truck. Okay. So I'm assuming you're doing, this is, a, the, all the numbers I came up with assumes a one cubic meter batch, or a one cubic meter unit. So it sounds like you're made, measuring uh, out a quarter of a cubic meter to do this. Does that say that in here? It sounds like you're me measuring or weighing out less than a cubic meter. Okay, so that makes sense if you're doing that. So it doesn't say that in here. Um, you can do that. Bear in mind that the 25 mils of set retarder it's not 100% solids. So theoretically, with that much of a, a chemical that you're putting in there, it's gonna bring a lot of water. I would make sure that you're multiplying that 25 mils by whatever water content and take out that water content from the water. And yeah, if the back of the soup can, you know, if the, the manufacturer is telling you to put it in the head water, then you put it in the head water. Yeah. Ding, I have a question. Uh oh. So wait, I need another I'll, pretzel. Ah, no more pretzels. No cheese. It's come on. I'm gonna have breakfast or lunch here. But we need steak. Oh. What do you got? So I want this video to be about sequencing of set retarders. So what would happen if I added it at the end versus the beginning versus mixing it with the water versus not mixing it with the water? Mm -hmm. Great Ding. question. Great, great question. So why do we use, can I ask you a few questions? I have the answer. Does that make you feel good? No. No, no. <laughs> that makes me feel worse. Oh, well, I know the answer. <laughs> so this is, this is a very common okay. question. It's a very common question. The same, ooh, I just spoke. The same could be asked for set accelerators. Sure. 
or 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 uh, strength accelerators. It, you know, it's, so it's like the same difference as set retarders versus titration stabilizers. Why do we normally use set accelerator or set retarders and hydration stabilizers? What, what, what's the reason behind it? To manipulate your concrete mix. Ah, but why? What are we trying to manipulate? What are we trying hydration. to... Hydration. Hydration. From what? What do you mean? Like, what are we trying to protect ourselves from? With a hydration stabilizer? It's, set, it's setting up too fast. Why would it set it up too fast? Because that's how cement works. Normally, I feel like I'm pulling teeth here. Normally, we like use set retarders and hydration stabilizers um, because there is a either a concern from temperatures taking us off and us losing slump. That's normally the set retarder. Um, it, it's too hot out, and we've got a, sh a long drive time, a long commute. So we're going to. And I hate the name set retarder. It really is a. It, there's got to be a different name, uh, but it. Effectively, that's what it, it is retarding the set time, uh, especially when we have those long commutes, especially if there's a lot of hot temperatures. Now, for a hydration stabilizer, um, it's more for stabilizing that peak temperature if we're concerned about thermal shock, uh, thermal uh, volume changes, and a cracking that's induced for our bigger mass concrete pours. And as you know from David, our definition of mass concrete change to not just big aggregate or big concrete, but any concrete where we worry about temperature change. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really bastardizing that, so that's not verbatim. Um, so when do we use it? Making a full circle here, that's what your question was. When do you think we would use it? If we're trying to fight the negative impact of as soon as possible. Once we start fighting the thermokinetics of cement hydration, we're kind of up Schitt's Creek without a paddle. You know what I mean? Um, you know, when we, we wait, like I, we used to work on these fast track pavements, um, and if we did not get our initial slump, while we're in the central plant mixer, if we tried to uh, retrieve that, that slump by the time we got to the truck and the truck pulled out, we were fighting the thermal kinetics of cement hydration, and it was just, we're fighting the heat of hydration. So the sooner you can get in for a set retarder, yeah. Yeah. the better. But then a stabilizer, would you add it at its peak? Theoretically, you could, no, 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 no. You could add it, I, I would add all of this within that, that, that two minute, three minute mixing period that you're under the central plant mixer or under your mixer, you know, you're mixing it up. Um, there are some hydration stabilizers that you theoretically could but once you start kicking off hydration, especially if you're concerned about it, um, you're fighting an uphill battle. You know, the chemicals can only do so much. So, hopefully answered your question. Did we? Yeah. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go Congress!